Hello! It's time for some good old fashioned art. Hold on. Tell me something about these streams. Alright. Let's fucking go! Oh. Oh, it fixed itself. No, it didn't. Did what is with that asset always bugging itself out? Anyway. Oh, let me grab my drawing tablet. I woke up a little bit later than I wanted to, so I apologize for the sluggish start. But we'll get there. Also, apologies. Um, I banged my head on something last night, and um, I'm not feeling well because of it. Um, I'll, I'll share that whole story in a moment. But I need some. I need some good old ibuprofen. So, <laughs> what had happened was, um, it was like 3 a.m. I was laying in bed trying to sleep, and my cats, every once in a while, just love to fuck with my stuff. So, that's what they were doing. Well, more particularly Saturn. But, um, so, um, the way my room is set up, I have my bed in the corner, and then at the foot of my bed is my dresser facing to the right, basically towards my door, so my dresser is against the wall as well. And I have a lamp on my dresser, and my dresser is pretty tall, so what I usually do whenever someone's fucking with my shit is I, um, I like get up, crawl to the end of my bed, turn on my lamp, and then I'm just like, fuck off! But sometimes it doesn't work, so sometimes I have to step off of my bed. I go physically like weave my arms around and get him to leave, but um, whenever I went to step, I le when I lean forward to place my other foot on the ground, I just straight up walloped my forehead on the corner of my dresser and I literally have a mark. I have a mark in everything. It's awful and it hurts so bad. <laughs> like goddamn. Like I really couldn't I couldn't have avoided that. At least it's my forehead and not my eye. Please. Cause like since this is this bad on my forehead, I can't imagine what it would have been like if I had my eye on there. So, I shall count my blessings. I say, uh, good for this stream! Sorry, I'm yawning so much, but for this, this stream, I have, I have an idea. I've had this idea because we're approaching the little hiatus before before my anniversary. Next week is pretty much like the last week before then. We'll be streaming regularly next week and that'll be it. And I'm excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Can't wait to show you guys what I've been working on. I haven't drawn regularly like this in a, a little bit. I always like to make a little sketch beforehand. A little trick I picked up from life drawing. be a bit further down, huh? I'm thinking. Kind of hard to think whenever you have a bruised forehead. And it's like in the spot that I usually touch anyway. 
so it's it's so mean. So so rude. Oh, I have my tea. And I took my my medicine to make the pain not be so annoying. Oh, I have my heating pad. Oh, I need to like yeah, you know, you know, like just sketch something out and hope for the best. I'm trying to do this properly, but like I don't know. I'm having a rough morning, or rather afternoon. I walloped my head. It hurt like a bitch, and then I was and like the pain subsided. Cause I went to the, I went into my bathroom to check to make sure that like. I didn't fuck up my forehead, <laughs> and I was like, ugh, it's okay, there was nothing there, but now today I've got a little mark, and like, there's a little area on my forehead that's raised, not quite like a goose egg, but like, <laughs> it still sucks, you know? Kind of working, but like I don't know. The issues of having a prominent nose and not knowing how to emphasize that at like a lower angle. I need to shrink this down a little bit as well. Which is weird because like for my one of my projects for university, I've been doing a lot of um, like self portraits pretty much. I've been pretty much doing that this entire semester, but now even more so than for the first half. And, uh... They're like... Oil pastel, like, figure pieces of myself. And like... Fun, cute little scenarios. Basically in places that I like. In, in nice, feel-good scenarios. Like, like, one of them is of me just all curled up in a blanket. Because I love my blankets. Like, I literally have a comfort blanket. My security blanket. I literally can't sleep without it. And then there's, like, another one of me at the beach. And I don't live somewhere with a beach, but, like, I used to. And I enjoyed going to the beach. Sometimes, not always. Sometimes it was a pain in the ass. Like if it was super windy, because then the sand would bite your legs. It was not very fun. But yeah, I've been drawing myself a lot, so this shouldn't be like anything super tough. But also, it's not really me, but more so my VTuber and. My VTuber's a little more stylized than I am. But I'll get it. I know I will. I always do with these little drawings. 
So yeah, after after stream today, I'll be continuing working on those drawings. I got like four left. One of them is like one of them is almost fully sketched out. You know what's really fun about experimenting with materials? Cause like I pretty much never use oil pastels. Is that you can discover like how certain papers respond to certain materials. And I discovered that Somerset Velvet responds really well to oil pastels. And like oil pastel is a material where you wouldn't really think about how effective it is on a paper, but like <laughs> because like it pretty much lays on top of a paper and just sticks to it, but certain textures, certain paper textures respond better because they have a more like pliable absorbent texture so like it latches onto the oil pastel better so you have less white spots throughout your piece because like what a, some of my pieces have a lot of like a little white spots and i don't mind those because like if you're looking at it then you can like fill out the missing details with your own eyes but like i know that like some people who make art would not exactly prefer that but there you go somerset velvet it's really good with oil pastels and there's this other somerset that i used it was a lightweight somerset it was like a warm color it was really good with poscas like the best paper i've ever used with poscas basically with posca if you're going to if, if you're going to use Posca on a paper, I would recommend something that's like smooth and like doesn't absorb things. Basically like a, a smooth lightweight paper is your best bet. Because heavyweight papers usually always almost always absorb materials. Like there was this Somerset uh, newspaper gray that I used for the first half of one of my portfolios like my first portfolio for the first half of um this semester because i have i have i'm ta i'm doubling i'm taking two drawing classes at once this semester and i've done it the previous semester and the one before it from before i started streaming and uh when you're doubling like that you have double the things you need to do and so I've been doing two sets of everything. Like I had to do two papers per per like everybody else's one assignment. And then I had to do two tests in the two batches that we did. So it's four tests. I did shit at some of them, by the way, because um, I was too busy with other things. Not streaming things, but more so like other classes. Like it just kind of detracts from the time you could be spending studying. But I did better on one of them this time than last time. But not gonna know. Not the one I wanted to be better at. But um, it's whatever. My portfolios are almost always super good. I think the lowest portfolio grade I've gotten was a B plus, And that was for the first half for one of my classes this semester. But I think my overall grade will be really solid. because next week is critiques and so that's pretty much when everything has to be turned in and so I'll be turning in these little oil pastel portraits on Tuesday I will be critiquing those and then on Thursday I've got this big ass book that I made and I'm super excited about that one and I know I'm gonna get like a super phenomenal grade because it's like a it's like the previous one I did for that class, but on stor st steroids. Steroids. It's like crazy. Cause like, 
I like making interactive works. That's part of the reason why I enjoy streaming so much. It's because it's technically a project of mine and it's an interactive thing. So I really, really enjoy it. It's like I'm chatting, I'm, I'm playing games, making things. Like, I'm doing all sorts of shit. And it's exciting. It's really, really exciting. And I can't wait to branch out even further. And um, this book project that I have for one of my portfolios, that one is very particular and very special. And uh, it pertains to one of my stories, actually, but I can't share it publicly yet because it's a story that's a little bit closed off right now. But I'm hoping in the future, whenever like things progress more, then I can share it. Like there's one particular set of works that I've been doing that I've been super secretive about. And it's because, um, because it's a very ambitious project and, um, I've been doing all sorts of other things specifically to build up my own skills so I can pull it off. I'm very excited. Oh, I'm gonna have to blow this up in size soon, but not quite yet. Actually, hold on. We're in the we're in the sketching phase, so like things can be fiddled with a little bit. Oh man, I've been playing a lot of Infamous lately, and I fucking love that game. I, um, I beat and 100%ed Infamous 1. Because, like, the cool thing is, is that you can, like, just, you can just smoothly do, like, all of the side missions in between. Um, you can do certain, like, chunks of side missions between certain, um, main quests. And if you do it in a really good way, then like you can get to the final boss and when you beat the final boss, you 100% the game. It's a little boring whenever you do that though, because there's then there's nothing else to do, but it's whatever. And so after I beat Infamous 1, I decided to move on to Infamous 2. Not Second Son, by the way. If you're like my dad, you might confuse the two, but there is a different one. There's a, there's a number two with Cole McGrath, and it's not very good. <laughs> so if you forget that one, then I totally understand, because, like, it's not very good. Um, they changed Cole's voice actor, which is uh, strike number one for bad points. Like, who is that man? That isn't Cole? That's a, that's a totally different lightning man. Who is he? But like... Also, the story just doesn't really grab my attention. Pretty much the only good thing about Infamous 2 is the ending. The ending is absolutely phenomenal. And it very much sets up... Second Son. Pretty well. Like, each game sets up the next one pretty well. I don't think Second Son had any sort of setup for a new one. And there hasn't been a new one, because I believe Sucker Punch likes to do things in sets of three. And, um, they made Ghost of Tsushima in, um, 2020. They released it. It took them, like, six years to make it. So, like, chances are, if they're continuing their trilogy format, they're probably working on another one. And that they j they've just been quiet because they've been busy. Because, like, they're pretty small team. I'd say they're like a, a double A studio. They're like fairly small and they are owned by Sony. 
but uh, they only have like, what, like 160, 180 employees. So like, um, for the sheer scope of something like Ghost of Tsushima to be made by a team of that size is insane. And like, the only other game I could think of that was made at such a crazy scope would be like Sonic Frontiers, which had a, a, a production team of 60 people, which is bonkers because like I've seen footage of that game and it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like only 60 people were working on that. What the hell? I wonder how, how long production was because I haven't checked. Uh, back on my my um, nitpicks about Infamous 2 and how it's a very weak entry compared to the first game and Second Son. Um, I it, it's the it's the game that introduces mocap, motion capture, and that's the reason why they changed Cole's voice actor was because they wanted someone who could convey like the the physical like the physical movement through sound better which which is dumb they could have just like they could have just practiced they could have taught him but i don't know the time window between the first game and the second game so maybe they couldn't but um but man it's so weird like you hear him start speaking in the introduction and you're like Who's speaking? And then he starts talking in first person. And you're like, what the fuck? That's Cole? Like, he sounds completely different. They didn't even, like, they didn't even bring in somebody who sounds even remotely like the previous voice actor. I don't remember his name. But, um, all I remember is how, how, like, that already detracts very much from the player's experience. It's not very often that games like completely change voice actors like that, especially between like essential games, because like that's introducing you to like a very fundamental part of the story with the introduction of the beast. It's crazy. And um and like the mocaps all right but with the way they changed this the general style of the game the characters look like they're kind of sort of made of plastic like they fixed that in second sun second sun looks great it looks great it's a really really good launch title for the ps4 it's so good and i love the gimmicks i think they're so silly and honestly after a while after having second son for a while, I think around like 2017 or 2018, I was like, man, I really wish they made another one to follow up second son. But now that I know more about Sucker Punch Productions now, as an adult, I think I see what they're going for. They have a formula of doing things in sets of, of three, whether it's intentional or not, because they've only really had two IPs by that point and three IPs by now. So like they're a fairly small studio. I think another I think like probably the huge the biggest case as but the hugest but no the biggest case of like small team big game that I've seen is definitely um what the fuck is this studio called the guys that made no man's sky that studio i don't remember the name of it right now but um like there's only a few of them oh i just got a text from me then oh uh, but anyway um they're like there's only like a group of them like i don't even think there's a dozen of them like that's how small their team is and they made no man's sky and like yes 
it was super broken and messed up whenever the game first came out. But they've basically achieved their original goal now through a shit ton of updates. Like, that's one of those games where pretty much you're seeing every stage of development in real time. Like, they didn't want to do it that way, but like, because of the contract they had signed, they have no choice. They were very much a victim of corporate contracting. And I really hate it when that happens. When, when a really wonderful idea and product gets fucked up because of greed. And I'm not saying greed on their part, I'm saying greed on the company's part. I think it was Sony? Like, their image was completely tarnished. Like, they couldn't even go to their office for a while because of bomb threats. I remember watching a, a whole, like, documentary video. An edutainment type of video on YouTube about it. And I was like, damn, that really sucks. They just wanted to make a cool game, but they were crunched. Like, to the bone. Crazy. But the game isn't like that now. And I own No Man's Sky, but I haven't played it yet. Because I'm always really busy. <laughs> always too damn busy. Excuse me. Goodness. Also... I don't remember if I shared this on stream, but I had submitted, um, oh yes I did, I submitted, I, I talked about this last, on last week's drawing stream, um, I had submitted works to my student show, and the results came in, and one of my pieces made it! And I'm, I'm very happy about it, I wasn't whenever I got the results, because it wasn't the results that I had desired, but um, I shouldn't have even responded like that in the first place because I'm, I'm lucky that just any of my pieces made it. Because like, I have a friend who submitted five pieces and five was the maximum you could submit. I also submitted five pieces and one of mine made it, but he's also submitted five and none of them made it. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that, like, the student show would be, like, this brutal about what they want. I didn't think it would be this bad. Like, jeez. And, uh, I, I got upset at the results. I got upset because, like, it was a piece that I didn't even particularly care about. Because, like, I submitted a lot of pieces just as, like... Just as, like, saturation. Just to, like, fill in, um, those extra spaces. But there was only one piece in particular that I wanted in the student show. But one thing that we weren't informed upon, because apparently, um, the, uh, the center that takes care of, like, all the curations and stuff, they didn't tell us. They did not tell us that there was a theme, but they didn't tell us that um, only certain works would be taken because of the theme. They didn't tell us that. And it was like, what the fuck? So I reacted the way I did because I thought, oh fuck, my works aren't good enough. Oh fuck. I just, my works were too fussy or too particular. Oh, fuck. I'm doing terrible. Like, the thing is, is that I have rejection sensitive dysphoria, and I've gotten really good at handling it now, but I had a moment of weakness because I had overhyped myself. Because the thing is, is that if you lift yourself up too high, then the fall will be so much harder than you ever thought could be. I had hyped myself up. I just genuinely convinced myself that my the piece that I wanted in would get in because of the way it works and the fact that it's a high quality piece. Nope. It didn't get in and I was really upset. And after 
after getting those results. It was it was at the end of my drawing class that day when results were posted. And uh, after that, I was thinking about how I responded. And I was like, oh shit, I shouldn't have responded like that. That's really not professional at all. And it's like, that's, that's just not a healthy mindset to have anyway. So like, on Thursday, whenever I had my next class, I apologized to my professor about how I responded. Because I was like, that's fucked up. And like, I was constantly thinking about it ever since it happened. And I apologized to her, and she had actually forgotten that I did that, that I responded like that. But I didn't. I didn't forget because I felt bad about it. Because even, like, whenever I do something and it, like, either incites a negative reaction or, like, God forbid, hurts somebody, like, that sticks to me for quite some time. And, um, that was one of those cases where... I was like, I have to say something. And like, even if the other person forgets, I still feel obligated to apologize. Because I need to own up to my actions and you don't own up to my mistakes. How am I supposed to grow if I don't do that? How am I supposed to improve? Not just as an artist, but as a person. Like, what am I supposed to do? Besides, re reacting the way I did, if I did that, like, at a future point in my career where, like, it could make or break something, then, like, that's not good. That is not good. It's very important for me to learn that now, while I'm a student, then later, when I'm a professional and I can lose a lot of money or a lot of opportunities. God forbid opportunities. Oh my god. If I lost a bunch of opportunities, I would literally cry. Like, I would... It would be, like, the end of the world for me. But, um, god, man. Like, I think it's nice that, um, it wasn't that impactful for her the way I responded. As I'm sure other students have done the same, but I felt obligated to apologize because, like, no one, no one should respond to rejections, career-related rejections like that. Especially since, like, this is, a this is a career path where rejections pretty much, <laughs> there's, the you will always encounter rejections. Like, it's going to be a common experience regardless of your level, regardless of your skin level or how well known you are. Like, you, there will always be moments where you get rejected and you have to be prepared for that. You have to be aware of that, and you have to learn how to handle it. Because if you don't, then, like, you just won't make it very far. And so, I am aware of that now, and now if I submit works to more things in the future, I need to keep in mind that, like, hey, there's a pretty solid chance I could get rejected, especially if I don't know the theme of a show, like, if they don't disclose that, then, like, I need to be aware that, like, anything could happen. That I could get rejected. Just because my piece doesn't fit the theme. Because the thing is, is that with art, like, if your piece gets rejected, that doesn't mean it's bad. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. It just means that it wasn't suitable for the thing. It, it just simply means that you need to look elsewhere. And, because of that, um, there's this really cool little show that um, one of the student organizations at my university, they're doing, where um, you can submit some of your rejected pieces from the student show. To that one just to show off the pieces that didn't make it because yeah like i said um a piece being rejected doesn't mean it's bad it just means it didn't fit so i'm very excited for that i'll be submitting two of my pieces i know four of my pieces were rejected but only two of them there's only two of them that i want to submit to that show um And, uh, there's one piece in particular that I submitted 
that I'm saving for my own special show because um, you can apply to do solo shows if you're a senior, if you're graduating, and I plan on doing that, and I really need to find who I need to contact in regards to that, because, like, that's really important. I'm very excited, because, like, my portfolio, pretty much my entire semester, for one of my classes, I've been working on pieces specifically for my solo show, and I'm very excited for that. Actually, you know, just have this layered on top, so the way the head is angled it would be better if it's this. I'm very excited, and one of the pieces I submitted was actually part of a different portfolio, but I wanted to include it in my solo show anyway, just to like, cause like it fits the theme, it was a little different, but like it fits the theme, and I think it'll help uh, encapsulate more space. Cause I already have an idea for how I want things to be set up for my student show. Or not student show, but my solo show. Well, it is a student show, but it's a solo show. And, like, the great thing about all three of these things that I've talked about is that I can put all of them on my resume. All three of them. That's three things that I'm a part of. Three exhibitions that I'm featured in. And ee, <laughs> it's so exciting. Like, wow. Like, I may have been grumpy before, but, like, after considering everything, I was like, hell yeah. And besides the the student show that only got one work, um, there are prizes. <laughs> there are prizes in that show. And um, that means that um, there's a chance that I could get some monies, and that would be really nice. Because, like, even if it's only, like, one of the smaller prizes, I could use that to upgrade my drawing tablet. If it was one of the bigger prizes, I could either use it for my student loans or my computer. Um, but if I just, I feel like realistically, I have a better chance of just getting one of the smaller awards. Because, like, there's two major awards that are, like, a lot of money. Like, here, let me look. I'm not going to tell you the exact names, but I'll tell you, like, what they pertain to. So there's one for overall best of show, there's one for best life drawing or life painting, which the second one doesn't apply to me, then there's best ceramic work, doesn't apply to me, best drawing, that does apply to me, best graphic design, doesn't apply to me, second and third graphic design, obviously doesn't apply to me, best new media slash conceptual might apply to me, and then there's best piece of jewelry slash small scale metal and then there's best painting also doesn't apply to me best print doesn't apply best sculpture video animation does don't apply to me so there's only click a couple things that i have a chance of getting and i don't think i will make it but like it would be nice because like with that piece that didn't make it, there was a video that accompanied it, so I could have had a chance of getting that very last one that was best video slash animation. Because apparently there was only like one other submission with a video. And I don't even know if that video got accepted. So <laughs> that award just might not even happen. It would have been nice, but it is what it is. I have the video technically on YouTube, it's unlisted right now, but I need to re-upload a better one. But I've been thinking about saving it for that glass gallery. I might not. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. It's something I have to think about. I've been extremely slow on this drawing today. Hell, it might not even color it in. Cause like, I got work to do.
I don't know. I've had a lot to talk about lately because I've, it's the end of the semester and that's when everything happens. That's when literally everything happens. And besides, um, since I've been working towards the end of my time in university, since I've been working towards my degree, I've also been trying to build up my experience because once I exit university um, that's when I need to be very mindful of things but technically streaming is very much just a side thing I mean I only stream three times a week and sometimes I have to cancel one of those three but um The only real reason for that is because, um, I don't really get anything out of this right now, financially speaking. And like, I probably won't for a while, and that's fine. This is- it's good for communication experience and stuff like that. But like, it still counts- counts towards something, but, um... If I- if I have to do something that's a little more important, then I'll do that. And streaming will always be a thing that I enjoy, though. I really do enjoy streaming very much. Hold on. <sighs> this is being annoying. But yeah, for a lot of people, streaming is just a side thing. And that they have a main thing that they do. And I am no exception. It is what it is. fix that real quick. What else is there? <clears throat> I'm very excited for um, my anniversary. There are a few things that I am a little bit behind on that I wish I wasn't, but that's because I've been busy. But um, hopefully um, when next week comes, um, that won't be a problem. Uh, we'll be... We'll be Right as rain, and we'll be able to just finish everything beforehand. Well, not we, I mean me. When I say we, I mean me, and only me.
I feel like I'm missing something over here. That's what I'm trying to do. But like, it's, it's annoying and it's not going down the way I wish it was. Cause like, there's a part of me that feels like it should be lower. But like, with the way the head angle is, it doesn't quite sound right. Maybe it is. Yeah, sure, why not? Why not? That works, I guess. too much effort into this. That's what I tend to do. Oh, I forgot to tweet about my stream when I'm live and stuff. Whoops. Whipsy! No, I forgot it was Wednesday as well. I should get better with time, but, uh, hold on, let me do that right now, actually. Give me just a moment. I really hate that Twitch changed the UI because I don't know where anything is. destroying my eyes. No, that's fixed. this arm. It should be something like this, but I'll probably have to adjust it because this isn't a pose I usually draw. We'll get there. We always do.
I'm really excited to finish this though. As like I've had this idea bouncing around in my head. Pretty much since like I think Sunday or Monday. been drawing hands a lot this year as well so I'm a lot better drawing hands this year than I was last year I'm not happy about that To like featuring like subtle symbolism, just a little bits by bits, doing something like that. Like they're one of my pieces, one of my traditional pieces has like, excuse me, the little beach one I talked about earlier. Um, it has the sun perfectly positioned, so it's like a traditional halo, kind of. I just thought that was a nice touch. I want to see what other people think about that, or if anybody picks up on it. Because a part of, a part of my um, whole thing with it featuring like bits of symbolism is like sometimes I'm like, I wonder what other people will think. Sometimes I just include things just to see what how other people feel or what they see. Cause I'm just, I, I don't know, I'm just like that for some reason. But it's, 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 it's fun to play around with, um, imagery and stuff like that. It's really like, like a brain exercise almost. Like what can I sneak in here? How can I integrate things into it? What can I do with this? All those good questions. All the curiosity. I don't draw hands holding things very often, so I hope this looks alright. But hey, you can't learn if you don't try, so like even if it doesn't look all that great, I hope it looks good enough to convey the point. Actually, I think I'll put these a little bit higher. I'm gonna put these them in a particular angle as well. See, sometimes it just takes a couple tries, and then they're all good. Doing great. There won't be very much of the body featured, so like past a certain point I'll stop drawing it.
This one needs a little work. There we go. Of this arm a little bit. Just a bit. I'm a, little, I'm a little twig. I'm skinny. Let me fix that. I don't know. I still have a bit of an old habit with drawing my figures. Um, pretty much like when I was learning how to draw and teaching myself and all that stuff, I always drew my figures very like full and thick because. Um, I dealt with a lot of insecurity about being so small, but I recently got a lot better at drawing my own figure. That's part of the reason why I've been doing a series where I draw my own body, because um, that's something that I've been learning to come to terms with. It's just a big source of insecurity for me for a while, but I'm doing a lot better and I'm a lot more confident in myself now. And I know some people would look at my figure and be like, oh, what do you have to be insecure about? Listen, it's different for everybody. And besides, um, part of it was caused by my chronic pain, so... You, if you feel that way, just don't, don't, don't feel the way you feel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I understand why someone would, would think that. But like, just be mindful that like, different people have different desires. Different people have different aspirations and different people have their own different issues. And I've been sorting through my own. The way, the fact that I draw my own figure and it very much fits like some standard, like it fits certain conventional standards. Um, I've al I'm always prepared for people to be like asking specific questions about it, like well, why'd you pick that particular figure? Oh, why did you draw this particular figure instead of say a different one? Or like. Why do you only draw this figure? It's because it's mine. That's why. So like... Yeah, it's always good to be prepared for questions like that, cause like, but they're understandable. I totally understand those questions. And I have actually been asked um, that type of question before um, in, in, in relation to one of my assignments from last year. And like, um, 
whenever I had explained my reasoning, um, they wanted to delve a little further into why, and then I kind of like choked up a little bit. It's like uh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I wasn't quite ready to talk about that kind of thing yet because I was at a little bit of a sensitive point at the time. But um, that was a good experience overall. Like it was, it, that was a little bit like ugh, whenever whenever the question was asked, but like. After it was asked, and after critique and stuff, I was like... I kept looking at the piece relating to that question, and I was like, man, I'm glad I made this. And who knew it would be the start of something great? I've been doing a lot of things regarding this and honestly I think that piece may have been part of the reason why I, my style changed I mean my style was changing over the fall already but like it just kind of had a bit of a breakthrough um, in, in December around the time that my cat Lily had to be put down I know that's a very sad thing to bring up, but that was just in general very like a very big turning point in my life and it manifested through my art as well. It was just overall despite everything, it was good. I miss Lily, I do. But we all have to move on. Not move on in the sense of forgetting, but move on in the sense of we have to keep growing. The world keeps spinning whether we like it or not. So it's important to know how to like process things and how to accept things. Mm. Accept things as they come, as they happen, and learn to come to terms with all sorts of different things in life. It's tough, but like, it's so worth it. This drawing isn't taking as long as I thought it would. I just spent a little too much time on the face and the head. <laughs> but I should probably actually do this. And wait, hold on. Not like that, but like... Mm. I don't know, it feels like something's missing over here. I hate that feeling.
I think maybe that's what I needed to do. Let's just bring this up a little bit. like that wow well, I wasn't expecting it there we go alright um, I'm gonna take a small break I shall be right back I need something to eat. I got hit with a, a wave of dizzy, so I'll be right back.
I'm back. Alright. I had some, I had some, some leftover ahi tuna from last night. Cause I ordered sushi. And, uh, the place I ordered from had some ahi tuna. And I love ahi tuna so much. It's so yummy. I kind of wish they seared it a little bit longer. But aside from that, it was really, really good. Excuse me. Because, like, for those that don't know what ahi tuna is... Hold on. Let me put on some chapstick. Um, ahi tuna is basically, like... It's this piece of tuna that's seared on the outside, but it's still raw on the inside. And I know that's alarming for some people, but like... Honestly, raw tuna is so delicious. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to reach for my... My... My pen. I had forgotten to grab it. But, um... Actually, yeah, she pees down a little bit, I think. Maybe. But, uh, yeah, ahi tuna is really good. Because, like, it's got all sorts of, like, spicy seasoning on it. I think it's, like, pepper and, like, some black sesame. It might be something else, I'm not sure. But it's really freaking good. Because, like... The raw part makes it like really nice and juicy, and um, the cooked part actually, you know what, that was a bad decision. All I did was make everything flat. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have hit more sharpen. Should be good. Yeah, that's good. Cause I think sharpen more does it does it like four times. But if you just do like three times with regular sharpen, then it like it sharpens it just enough. But um, yeah, ahi tuna is delicious. I would totally recommend trying it. Like if you're if you're like iffy about completely raw tuna, then ahi tuna might help like alleviate that a little bit but it depends on where you get it because some places sear it more than others like the pieces i had were barely seared but they were still good but like i feel like if the pieces were like slightly smaller and seared just a little bit more so it's just like the center that was raw then like i feel like it would be a little better well, that's pretty much my only complaint. It was still really, really good, regardless. But yeah, I remember... I was probably like... Maybe like 13. Maybe younger. And we had went to some place. I don't even remember, honestly. But I remember my dad had gotten ahi tuna. I was like, what's this? And he was like, it's ahi tuna. It's the fucking bomb. You should try some. And then I was like, oh, okay. And so I tried it, and it was really, really good. It was the fucking bomb, just like he said it would be. So, yeah, I really like ahi tuna. It's so delicious. Because, like, the thing is, is that with fully... I don't like fully cooked tuna, because the, the texture is just meh. But raw tuna is really good, because it has a lot of flavor, and it has a lot of moisture in it. But ahi tuna just combines the best of both. But I feel like I, I may have a better experience with cooked tuna if it's not like canned or something. Because I've noticed that canned meats just usually taste worse than the non-canned counterparts. 
But I feel like maybe like a seared tuna steak or something would be good. But like, I've only really had, I've only really had caged tuna that was fully cooked. I'm sure there are ways to prepare canned tuna in really good ways as well, but like, I don't know of any, so... It is what it is. So, before stream today, I saw a post on Twitter, well actually no, during stream, I saw a post um, about the Legend of Korra and how um, one of the deaths was like really impactful. And like, yeah, finally, <laughs> a post where somebody's not shitting on Korra for once. Like, you could tell, just by looking at some of the posts, you could tell that Korra is, like, disproportionately hated most of the time. And, uh, I don't like that. So, finally, somebody's not doing that. Because, like, yes, the show is flawed, but I feel like it's, it was really good in what it did. And I feel like a lot of people don't see that. Cause like all they want is just Aang number two. But like Korra isn't Aang number two, she's Korra. And also she got screwed over by um, Nickelodeon just not being nice. Like I think she got put on like, like her show got put on like unfair times. like times where not very many people would be watching because i remember i got to see season one like a lot of season one but not all of it because of like just the timing and i was sad about it because i wanted to see all of it and then i finally got to see all of it as an adult and Korra's not bad their show is not that bad it's amazing how things turn out to not be bad if you don't have a piece of shit shouting in your ear that it is bad. Sometimes you just gotta, like, watch things for yourself. And, like, just, like, enjoy it on your own. Because I enjoy it, and, like, I understand one of the complaints is about the flow between seasons, but the thing is, is that they didn't have confirmed four seasons. Or was it three seasons? I can't remember. Um... It may have been three seasons. No, it was four. Um, but like they had to, they had to go on a season by season basis. So they had to write it in a way to where like if they didn't get approved for another season, that it would just be wrapped up, like there, then and there. Like um, so, that's why they had like season by season antagonists instead of one antagonist over the course of the whole show. So they they were very much trying to like make a compromise with their situation to make things a little bit better just in case shit hit the fan. They got lucky and they were able to get four seasons, but um, unfortunately because of their cautionary writing style, it ended up um, lowering the quality overall on the flow of the story, but it wasn't like not there at all. Like there were always like open ends, even with a closed finish. So I got to see season one as a kid, but I wanted more. I wanted to see more so bad, but I didn't. And I didn't get to see it until I was an adult and I saw it on Netflix. And it was like, oh yeah, I never got to finish this as a kid. So I'm gonna finish it now. And I'm glad I did, because I really like Korra very much, and I feel like the hate is mostly undeserved. I understand criticism, but like, hate? That's a little bit too much. But to be fair, I'm also very easy to please, so maybe there's something they see that I don't. Or maybe they are just being little whiny, whiny turds about it. I don't know. I like it. 
I think it works. I think it's good. Cora is her own person. Don't treat her like Aang number two. She has flaws. And guess what? Aang has flaws too. He literally... Like... Oh my goodness. Like... I feel like people treat Aang like he's like... This perfect little guy that can't do no wrong. But like, he made like one of the hugest decisions that could have probably defined everything like like the air nomad genocide like honestly because he's so young it's hard to tell if he would have actually made a difference if he stayed but there was still a chance that things could have been saved he ran away he didn't know what was going on at the time obviously but like he still ran away from home he ran away from his responsibility Like, they both have their own flaws, and like, people blame Korra for losing connections to the previous avatars. But that <laughs> wasn't even her fault. That was Unalak. That was- that- that's what happened. <laughs> like, Rava was just- just torn from her body, like, that's not her fault. And I hate it when people blame her for it. Like, did you even watch the show? Probably not. When people make critiques like that, chances are they didn't even watch what happened. Now, like, you can dislike a show, but, like, don't be like, Oh, it's the worst, and if you like it, you're cringe. Don't be like that. There's a difference between just simply not liking something versus being an ass about it. So, like, if you just don't like it very much, then, like, cool. But don't be all like, I don't like Korra, she's a bitch. Then like, how dare you, I will throw hands. I may be small. I may be scrawny. But I ain't afraid to square up. But also, I feel like Korra has some really good moments. And like, those get underappreciated because so many people are just busy, like, indiscriminately hating on the show. So yeah, don't pay attention to what other people say. Just, like, watch the show for yourself and then you can, like, form your own opinion on it instead of just listening to what other people say and watching random clips don't be like dragon ball fans <laughs> and i say that as a dragon ball fan but unlike most people i actually watch the show i haven't in a hot minute i'm in boo saga but like I need to finish it, but I've been too busy. And I've been watching Kai, and I know some people criticize Kai, but it's usually incorrect criticism. Because usually the criticisms are just thrown at, at the Nicktoons dub, but the thing is is that... <laughs> there are two different dubs! There's the Nicktoons one, which is censored, and then there's the regular one, which is uncensored. And Hulu... Most of the episodes are the uncensored version. Sometimes you'll find... You'll find a... A Nicktoons episode in there. Like, you can tell by the introduction. You can tell by the intro. Because it's the... It's the intro voiced by... It's the intro sang by Vic McGiona. And it's, it's shortened as well, and for some reason has no credits. So that's how you can tell if it's a Nicktoons episode, but sometimes it doesn't really matter too much. Because thankfully, Nicktoons didn't really censor the plot, they just censored certain things that they felt really needed to be censored for the sake of child viewers. 
But also, I'm glad that they did what they did, because that was my introduction to Dragon Ball. I wouldn't have gotten into Dragon Ball if I didn't see the version on Nicktoons. So, I understand the criticisms, but it's not... It's not that bad. A lot of people got introduced through that. I'm sure there are plenty of others who saw it. Dragon Ball Z Kai on Nicktoons as a kid, and they were like, Whoa, this is so awesome! Especially compared to other things on Nicktoons at the time, like... You see the animation, and you're just like, Whoa! Why isn't there anything else like this on here? This is amazing! Now... DBZ Kai wasn't my introduction to anime, but it was my introduction to Dragon Ball. That's why I, I say it like that. It was like... My introduction to anime was through Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, because my sister watched that a lot. And of course, I saw it on Adult Swim whenever I was a little ins insomnia-riddled child. And I'm glad I did, because it's very good. But I didn't get to finish it until much later in my life. Same thing with Hunter x Hunter, but I got introduced to Hunter x Hunter whenever I was like 13, so... As a teenager, whenever I found that, but... I didn't get to finish that until I was like 20, because... For some ungodly reason, Netflix only had some of it. That was, that was like a really weird thing with Netflix, was that they would always have, like, if, it, if an anime was a bit longer, they would only have some of it. They wouldn't have the whole thing. It was really dumb. It was really, really dumb. So like, there'd be certain anime, like Fairy Tale as well, it only had up until the end of the um, Fantasia arc. And I loved the Fantasia, Fantasia arc. I rewatched the shit out of it. Like, my middle school brain was like, this is the best. I fucking love this. And so, I mostly just watched that. I really enjoyed it. Excuse me. We're almost there. Actually, this line's a little bit too low. Maybe you fix this as well. Oh my gosh, next week we're finishing up Oblivion and Metal Gear Rising. Oh man. I'm gonna be sad, because we've been playing Oblivion since September. And like... I honestly didn't think Metal Gear would take us this long, but... I was wrong, because I'm bad at games. <laughs> what it is. All good things must come to an end eventually. And then we can make room for more good things. And do more cool shit.
Well, I've been um, keeping tabs on the progression of Project 06, the fan remake of, or rather remaster of um, Sonic 06. And I've been seeing Chaos's progress on the, um, the boss fights. And man, he works fast! Like, damn. It's crazy. Like, I believe he just finished Iblis Phase 1. Yeah, he just finished Phase 1 and he started working on Solaris. Um, he also started working on uh, Iblis Phase 2, but he was going to work on Egg Genesis and moved on to um, Iblis Phase 3. So, he actually started on Phase 3 before Phase 2 because um, Phase 2 is a little awkward. I'm sure that'll take a while, but yeah, I totally understand why the Egg Genesis would be skipped. Because it's a little complicated. But then he just went right into Solaris. And it already looks really cool. So I'm very excited to see what else he does. Cause like he just recently came back from his little break. Cause like he finished the silver storyline and then he was like, I'm gonna go on a break. See you later. Understandably so, cause apparently he's been working on this for like over five years, so yeah, take a break, man. Take a break for as long as you need. But once everything's finished, I'm gonna put it on my bucket list of games to play. Just you wait and see. Cause I've played the original 06. I have the PS3 version with now, but I grew up with the Xbox 360 version. And man... I loved that game. I know it's bad, but man, I loved that game. It was hard, but I thought I was just shit because I was like five and um, I had small hands and I was shit at other good games. So I was like, oh, I just need to get better. I'll persevere. I'll break through me and my tiny five-year-old hands. And that's what I did for the most part. It took a long time, but I eventually um, unlocked Silver's and Shadow's stories. And I was so excited to play those, and I really liked them a lot. I completed... I think I completed Shadow's story first, and then I completed Silver's. But I never completed Sonic's, because I got to Kingdom Valley. And the speed sections in each area... They're shit. I think the easiest one was probably the Crisis City one, which is the one that's usually most complained about, but it's the shortest of all of them. I had a really hard time with Wave Ocean. And, um... What's the other one? There's a third one. What's the other one? I can't remember. I'm blank. Oh, it's the, the train one. Can't remember the name of the area, though. But that one really sucks as well. That's probably, like, overall the worst. It's the most broken, for sure. But, um, the Kingdom Valley one gave me the hardest time as a kid. Um, but it also took me forever to get to Sonic's Kingdom Valley because of the stupid trials beforehand. And one of them is a no-hit fighting fest. And it's awful. I just, I got frustrated with that. And once I finished that... And then there was the trial of Liv, and I was like, oh, finally, something I can do! And I just, just breezed through it. I was like, you, Amy, come here. You are the love of my life now. Get me out of this hellhole. And then I went to Kingdom Valley, and that was, that was the end for me as a little kid. Pretty sure it took me like multiple years to get that far as a little kid. I've been playing video games since I was like two years old, I'm pretty sure. Because like I got interested in them. I don't really even remember this. I've played games for as long as I can remember. Um, like the first, uh, 
One of the earliest memories I have is of playing Sonic Advance and Sonic Advance 2, and also playing um, the GBA port of Zelda A Link to the Past. But um, I'm pretty sure like one of my first real like game experiences was um, my dad was playing something on our PS2, and then he picked me up and put me in his lap. And I and he and he let me play with the controller, and so I've been playing games for longer than I've known how to read. I didn't know how to read whenever I started playing games, and I remember playing Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. And if you know anything about RPG games, they have a lot of dialogue. There's so much to read, and I didn't read any of it. I didn't really understand the RPG system, so I got stuck on the fight against Queen Bean. And um, then I lost that game. And I lost my copy of the game. I don't remember if I misplaced it or if it just disappeared into the ether. But um, I was so sad because like I never got past that fight. Because what I did was I would run from fights all the time because I just wanted to explore. Excuse me. And anytime I leveled up, I would just add the bonus to my HP. And, um, at that point in the story, it's very much like, oh no, we have to go to the bean store. It's not safe. And I thought like if I ran fast enough to get to it, then I'd be able to bypass that fight. <laughs> so anytime I reloaded that save, I would just beeline it to the, to the scene. But like, I didn't understand how scenes and required things really worked at the time. So there you go, a little bit of Baby Sam lore. I've known- I've been gaming longer than I've known how to read. I remember also when I was a kid, we had Shadow of the Colossus, but I never played it because the cover scared me. I saw the cover and it was like this imposing thing and I was like, uh-uh. No, that's scary. And I wanted to play it, but like, I just didn't. But I got to play it. I think I was like 17 or 18 when I finally got to play it. Because it was ported onto the PS4. Leave a game like that was on the PS2. That shit's crazy. I kind of wish it was on PC, like if it was ported onto PC, but I'm pretty sure Shadow of the Colossus is a Sony exclusive. I don't know. I'll have to check. because I know it's a console exclusive at the very least, but I don't know if it's specifically Sony exclusive. such a long history with playing video games. How often can you come across somebody who's been playing games since they were two years old? Actual video games with the controllers and everything. It's so funny because one of my favorite recurring memories from whenever I was really little was sometimes I would encounter an obstacle in the game and like, I would know exactly what to do, but I couldn't get past it because I my motor skills weren't developed enough. And I was aware of it. So what I would do is I would either get my sister or I'd get my dad. I would be like, can you help me get through this? I know what to do, but I can't do it. And so I would tell them exactly what to do and then they'd get through it for me. It was usually like a rhythm section or something. I loved rhythm games, but whenever you have like 
the motor skills of a five-year-old, you can't really get through it, you know? So, like, if there was a really hard part that I needed to get past... Ooh! Actually, I don't know if anybody watching this remembers that, um... Uh, Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events had a PS2 game. And we had that PS2 game. Actually, this is less spikes than they're supposed to be. Hold on. Let me get rid of those. They're supposed to be, like... There's always, like, at least five visible. You could see it on my own VTuber sprite. But, like... Hold on. Oof, that's ugly. But, um, that game has this shooter section in it. It's like an auto-scrolling shooter section, like those arcade games. But, um... It's really hard. Like, even my sister, who is six and a half years older than me, by the way, has a really hard time- had a really hard time with it. Like, it was hard for both of us. It was crazy. Like, I remember this one time, before I understood how, like, curling irons and stuff worked, I had burnt my hand because I grabbed it. So I was like, you can tell by that statement alone that I was extremely young. I, I, I believe I may have been four when that happened. I was either four or five. But I was also- I had also gotten my thumb stuck in our VHS when I was five, so yeah. Even with my my intelligent approach to video games, I was still a five-year-old that did five-year-old things. So, um, I remember sitting with my hand in a bag of aloe, watching my sister play the game, and she got stuck at that section. We call that the peppermint section, because it's a peppermint gun, and you have to shoot like all these crabs and these, these people that are trying to attack you. And, like, you have to be nearly perfect, which is insane. There, there's such a huge difficulty spike at that one spot in the game. And then, like, both before and after it is, like, fairly easy. Like, it's still all, like, the same level of difficulty. But, um... Neither of us could get through it. And so, we'd have to, like, wait until... Our dad was available. Hopefully he was home. Because um, our dad was in the service. He he was um, a submariner. He's he's been retired since like 2011. But um, he used to he used to man submarines and stuff. He was a sonar tech. So like sometimes he wouldn't be home, and we wouldn't be able to ask him for help. So like we just have to try to persevere through that one section. So usually like I've never beaten that section ever as a kid. I got pretty far, but it's like an, a disproportionately long area in the game. For how difficult it is. And uh, when you die, you have to start over. <laughs> you have to start over from the very beginning. There's no checkpoints. It was brutal. <laughs> they, they put this in a kid's game, man. It was unfair. But um, sometimes my sister would just have to really like keep trying and trying and trying. And like, I think I may have, actually, I may have beaten it once, but I was so young I don't really remember. But it was really tough. If I ever got the chance to play that game again, especially for like a stream, then like, I feel like I would still struggle at that section, because it was pretty tough. Because I was like, 4 or 5, and my sister was like 10 or 11, and even she would have a hard time with it. But, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, I've always been the better gamer. I mean, we had the game Cameo and the Elements of Power, which was a release title for the um, Xbox 360. I was the first person in my family to beat it. <laughs> At six years old, I beat it before everybody else. And if you know anything about the game, it's really tough. Like, I only beat it once. Honestly, it was a fluke that I beat it in the first place, but I did, and nobody else beat it. And I was very, very proud of that accomplishment, because, like, I was a dedicated gamer. I was a very dedicated child to my gaming. So, 
so like <laughs> I've always I've always been somebody who enjoyed my video games. Can you just imagine, like, a tiny six-year-old, like, being that game and being like, I did it! I did it! I beat it! I beat the game! And then everybody else is like, what? You beat it? Like, like, it was crazy. I was really proud of myself. I still am. I'm still proud of myself for that. That was one of my greatest accomplishments in life. <laughs> Beating Cameo at six years old. That game is so tough. And not to mention, I had actually gotten stuck a lot of times in the same spot. And usually whenever I was stuck somewhere for a while, I would just start the game over from the beginning. And work up to that point again. Cause like, I figured that like doing that would help refresh my mind. And like, I wouldn't be stuck anymore cause I would know what to do for once. And after a few tries, I eventually got it, but I was also a little scared of the third boss. Because it's like this ice spider thing, and I had like debilitating arachnophobia as a kid. It's not as bad as it used to be, but I was terrified of spiders. Like, absolutely mortified. <gasps> Saturn! Hello! I love you. You want to come up in my lap? Come here. Come here, baby. Come on! Come on! Ah! <laughs> the boy is here. The boy is here! Hi. Sorry, he's, his tail is touching my microphone. Are you happy? Can you sit down please so I can keep drawing? You cannot have my my stylus. You cannot have my pen. He just like slowly raised his paw and brushed my pen with it. Cause he wants to play with it. Can you sit down please. You're crusties on your face, dude. Come here. You little crusty old man. I'm not letting you go. I'm getting the crusties. Honestly, I have a lot of video game related memories from that time in my life but like there's some of them where i can't quite tell just how early they were like i remember playing i don't remember which spongebob game it was i think it was battle for bikini bottom no it was the movie the game that's what it was we had a lot of like movie and and um media based games in our in our collection and I remember we also had um, The Simpsons, the movie, the game as well. And I really, really liked that game a lot. It was very fun. Or was it the movie, the game? It was the game on the Xbox 360. And like, it was really good. I really liked it. It was really fun. And I loved the way it looked. It had really cool graphics. For the time, obviously, but like it was stylized and like that. I didn't see that very often in video games at the time. And I, I got all excited and like, oh, look at him. They look so cool. <laughs> when I was a little kid. I, and um, I've been collecting games from my childhood for years now. Like since I was like 16, I've been collecting games and I'm 22 now. I'm almost 23. And like, I just recently acquired... Final Fantasy 13 and 13-2, as well as um, Sonic 06. Um, and I have several um, GBA games that I've acquired as well. But um, there's still a lot of games out there that I still haven't gotten yet. And I think 
Um, I think I'd really like to get a hold of those three that I mentioned. Cameo, and then Spongebob the movie, the game, because they only remade Battle for Bikini Bottom. I have that on my Wii. Or, not on my Wii. I have, it, I have it on my Switch. And it's okay, but, like, I think I think the movie, the game, is better. And I need to get that Simpsons game. Because that one was really fun. That was a very, very fun game. Oh, and there was one for Kung Fu Panda. Back whenever there was only one game. Or not one game, but one movie. Alright, I need to clean this up. And then we'll be almost done. But I need that game as well. Because I really liked that one too. Because like, the thing is, is that at that time. Back in like the peak of licensed video games, like movie-based games. They were really good. They were actually pretty good and pretty fun. What are you doing, Saturn? He's trying to lick my hand. What are you doing? Like he just shoved his nose into my thumb and I was so confused. Like, excuse me, sir, I'm trying to talk. I love you, but what are you doing? Yeah, he's chilling now. He's comfy. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of really good games that were like licensed media. And there's also the Tack series from the PS2 and the GameCube. The Attack and the Power of Juju. Um, I didn't really play Tack 2, but I had Tack of the Great Juju Challenge. And I at least want the first and third one. And I also need to get a PS2, because my PS3 is not backwards compatible. So, like, I have all of these, like, collection things I need to get a hold of. And I'm hoping that, like, I can eventually do that. I also still have some Wii games I need to acquire. Like, I don't have Wii Sports anymore. As the Wii I got is a first-gen Wii, and it came with Wii Sports. But I lost it! I lost it! Because I got my Wii before the little, like... The little, like, motion, like, gyroscope type thing was a thing. Like the, like, like, the thing that Skyward Sword uses. That wasn't until, like, 2010. And I... Was it 2010? I think it was 2010. Like, the Wii have lasted a pretty long time. Generationally speaking, it lasted a pretty long time. Because they added, like, add-ons and stuff to improve gameplay. Yeah, a little motion thing. The Motion Plus, that's what it was called. You know, the Wii Motion Plus, for like, for a while there weren't controllers with it built in, but there was the little like brick that you could get to connect to your Wiimote. And I have one of those exclusively to play Skyward Sword, and thankfully that was one of the few games where I still had my copy, even after all this time. Like it has the little GameStop sticker on it and everything. Because it was pre-owned, I think. Man. Those were the good days. The good old days. I had a shit ton of games for no good reason. Back when we had like a DVD tower with all of our movies. And like sometimes we'd have movie night and then they'd be like, Sammy, go pick a movie for us. And then I'd be like, ah, oh, Spider-Man 3. <laughs> and they'd be like, no, <laughs> pick something else for once, please. No Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 is the best one, in my opinion. I like that one a lot. But I just thought the Sandman was cool. That's why I liked that one so much. to do this because like this looks a little funky so 
sometimes it's nice to like reminisce on those things because then I remember then like sometimes it can doing that can help me remember things I've forgotten because I have a shit memory for some reason. Excuse me. Actually, I know the reason, but like, nah, that's not really something I feel like talking about. There we go. Look at that. More circular. Maybe. I hope that's good. This doesn't quite look right. Saturn, what are you doing? What are you doing, dude? I think he's just readjusting himself. I need to be careful because like if he if he <laughs> walks onto my 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 pen, he's gonna start swiping at it and then I won't be able to keep drawing. Right now he's rubbing on my drawing tablet, stinking it up, cause he loves me. Hello. Such a baby. Um, I need to fix up the hair a little bit. But I think I'm pretty much done. I think I need to fix that, actually. Come on. Saturn, you're so loud. Oh, hi! Ooh, woo. Gaming? Nah, I'm not gaming right now. Been talking about gaming, though. My, my favorite games from whenever I was a wee little baby. Reminiscing on, on more games that I still need for my collection. I like, like collecting games from my childhood. Here we go. Oh, but we haven't done the wings yet. Oh, VR! Nice! Saturn, could you please stop? He keeps rubbing his face on my drawing tablet. And I love the sweet boy, but he's... ...getting in the way.
Eh. Hold on, let's open up the uh, ref sheet. Almost opened up the wrong ref sheet. Yeah, those little things. on the wings in a while so I'm not used to doing this. lines are good though. With that, we can clean them up. I think Saturn's falling asleep. He's getting heavier in my lap. He's very comfy, that's for sure. Yeah, let's just go ahead and fill this in. He is very EP. You missed it. I at the start of stream, I talked about how um, last night at like 3 a.m. he was messing with stuff in my room. And normally, what I do is I just like smack my bed, like just try to make loud noises to get him to stop. Like, hey, fuck off, get out of here. But it wasn't working. So that then by that point, I like get up. Or I don't really get out of bed, but like I crawl to the foot end of my bed and turn on the lamp that's on my dresser. And then I'm just like, hey! Stop it! But when that doesn't work, when that doesn't work, um, that's whenever I get out of bed. So I I planted my one of my feet onto the ground. 
and I lean forward to get onto the ground like I'm supposed to with both feet. And I just straight up walloped my forehead on the corner of my dresser. I just- I actually have like a little scratch on my forehead now from it. And I, there's a little raised area as well. So, <laughs> that hurt really bad. But the noise from me walloping my forehead made him leave. So I did technically succeed, but it was was for a small price. I just hope that this big old mark on my forehead disappears before Tuesday. I don't want to go to critique with a big old scratch on my forehead. Because my hair's parted in the middle and it's right there in the center. It'll be so visible, everyone will see it. I don't want people seeing that. But man, that really hurt. <laughs> So I took ibuprofen at the beginning of stream just because, like, it was really hurting and it was really distracting, but it doesn't really hurt now. That's nice. And Saturn just left. Alright. No more baby. No more boy. I need to add images of my other two cats as well. They never come in here like Saturn does, but like... What if they do? What if they do want to hang out with me? I'm like, I need, it. I need to put an image of them in there. Excuse me. Man, I'm excited to finish this semester. Next week is pretty much my last regular week. And that's when my critiques are. I usually, like, finals week is really easy for me. And I do have a final on that Thursday. And I won't be streaming for finals week. So next week is my last week. But I'm still excited. I'll be spending most of that time finishing up everything for, um when I um, come back on my anniversary. And it'll be weird coming back on a Wednesday, but like, it's just how the cookie crumbles, you know? It's just how it is. I've been thinking about experimenting with an earlier stream time, because later stream times do not work for me very well, but I was thinking about an earlier stream time. But that's just a thought, because I've always had issues with keeping a consistent sleep schedule. But I think an earlier um, stream time would be nice. Not always. There would probably still be some days with like a later stream time. Like if I ever make an appointment for something, then like I'm gonna need to stream later in the day. But like, I can't just stick at one specific time. I should- I should experiment a little bit. But yeah, things will be changing... ...once the anniversary comes. It will be a new era... ...for my streaming. A new era of experimentation. I'm very excited for it. There we go. There's that. All the line art's done. Time for the shading. Our favorite part. 
or rather my favorite part. I love I love doing the shading. Superman has one of my favorite boss themes in Pizza Tower. Like, this song is such a cool introduction to the boss fight mechanic. Like, the other ones are good, but like, Pepperman is like a strong introduction to the bosses. Especially considering how much is introduced with his fight. Like each each boss fight is unique, but like that's where you're introduced to the fact that you have like a limited amount of hits. So like it can be really interesting sometimes. I don't know. I like Pizza Tower. I think it's a good team. most of the time, don't I? And that's- that'll work. That's all you get. Shading can get really fun. Yes. There we go. Actually, you know what? I'll lower this a little bit. We won't. That was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Like, this looks cool, but like, it doesn't really work considering how this leads into this. There we go. Look at that! We're arting! We're doing the art thing! making the art and we're doing the thing with the art
actually. Hold on. Hmm. I was just thinking about how to apply this onto this shading wise. Hmm. Hmm. This might work. Actually, I might keep that because, like, sometimes I do two layers of shading. I think that would fit pretty well. I think two layers of shading. complicated. <laughs>
Yeah, that's nice. I like this. And the shading may not be totally accurate, but like, I don't care. If it looks cool, I don't care. Alright, there we go. Now I have an idea. Actually, no, let's not change the background yet. Mmm. going to execute it. We're not using normal colors today. Because otherwise I'd be color picking. But nope, not, not this time. that ear isn't visible, I should still add the earring a little bit just to like signify that the ear is there. <laughs> normally do it the other way around but like I feel it felt like trying it out this way because of the way the lighting is Do all the erasing after I finish all this. I have an idea.
No, we won't bother shading the horns or the brows. There's no point in doing that. Back to the classics. With the old fashioned horns, eyebrows, and spikes that are all filled in. There we go. Wait, what am I doing? Right there. I wasn't planning on this drawing taking very long, but we've been streaming for two and a half hours, so it might take a little while, but that's fine. I like, I like how this is turning out so far. So like, I don't mind spending a lot of time on this drawing. Honestly, two and a half hours isn't technically that long, because I've spent longer on other pieces, but, um... It's long for a stream drawing. Because normally my stream drawings are like roughly two hours. Two, two hours. I said hours. I, I haven't, I don't know why, but I've been really, been a really hard time speaking lately. I don't know what's up with that. This is a little rough. We can clean it up later. I probably should have done this instead. That's fine, we've had to we've had to rework certain layers before. We can we can do that again. It's totally cool. Uh, 
it alright. Let's fix that real quick. supposed to be there. Alright. There we go. I guess the reason why I pointed out that this is a long drawing stream is because we've hit the point where I don't really have anything else to talk about. <laughs> And I don't like it when that happens. I just don't like having long pauses where there's nothing going on. But it is what it is. how this is looking already. I'm really happy with it so far. But like, honestly, like, if you look at the difference between this current drawing and my PNG tuber, you can see how things have progressed, how, how much I've changed and improved. And it's nice, it's very, very nice. Let's just green out the face real quick and then like go from there. As this might be what I want to use is shading instead. But I think I will because it is close to saturation and brightness to my actual skin tone. Which is always a good thing, because we love experimenting with colors.
Wait, just sneeze. Uh oh. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Excuse me. Alright, let's see what we can do with this. We need to fix it. If it's not one thing, it's another. But you know what? It's small enough that I can just erase separately, and it's no big deal. I think this is a good color. We love playing around with colors and stuff. That's why on my ref sheet it states that you can swap out like the hue and stuff so you can like... You don't have to color pick from the ref sheet, you can experiment with the color. Because that's a huge part of my design is that it's supposed to be versatile. Yeah, I think I think this is good. But now let's do the eyes. why I don't do the line shading with the eyes. I just have a feeling that if I did that, it would look weird. Because, like, I think having subtle shading with just having, like, the seamless difference is better. Yeah, let's just fill that in completely. Because eyes, eyes are just a delicate thing, so they should be treated as such. 
Trust me, I almost I almost stabbed myself in the eye last night whenever I smacked my forehead on my dresser. Oof. I I wouldn't wish that on anybody. That was scary. All cause my cat was messing with my shit. And I was trying to get him to stop it. a little bit lighter now that I think about it. Let's see. Make the make the difference in shading a little more dramatic. We can clean up the edges while we're at it. There we go. The way everything's bright. Time to move on to the other parts. And then we can finally finish up the bangles. And be done. I would like to do a background. Honestly, with me walloping my forehead, I'm surprised there's no bruise, but there might be a bruise tomorrow. I keep thinking about it, cause like... It's like a- it's like a spotlight right in the middle of my forehead. Why wouldn't I think about it? Thinking more about, like, talking more to my professor about digital art. Because, like, um, she doesn't really fully understand certain things about how, like, like she is right that digital art is usually easier depending on what you're doing. But there are ways that it can be harder. Not to mention, like, it's pretty much its own medium. Like, yeah, you could use- it, it's technically something where, like, it's, it could be counted as drawing or painting. Usually drawing over painting, but, um, there are things about it that are difficult. And not to mention, it also depends on what you choose to do. Like, if you, um, decide to just use the fill tool for everything, that is much easier than filling things in by hand, like what I do. But, um, for a price, um, usually you end up sacrificing quality depending on, like, how you do, like, your line work and stuff. Cause, like, if you do your line work in a certain way, then, like, using the fill tool won't look very good. If you do, like, pixel art, then yeah, the fill tool can absolutely be your friend. But, um, most of the time, it tends to look a little cheap.
No, we... But if you fill things in manually, then the general difficulty of drawing digitally versus traditionally is roughly the same. The only difference is, is that you don't have to worry about the cost of materials, and, um... It's easier to keep your work safe so it can't be, like, damaged by, um, other things. Unless you, like, printed it out, but then it's no longer digital. Oh, I forgot you. Oopsie. Because, like... I feel like if you don't know much about digital art, it's easy to look at a piece and be like, "Ah, oh, that must have been so easy to make." But then when you, whenever you find out like the amount of time it takes, and um, like when you see the process, then you're like, "Oh, maybe it's not as easy as I thought it would be." I guess that's part of the reason why arcade art archive a lot of the things I do with streams and stuff. Cause like, this feels nice. I have been thinking about um, cutting up my drawing streams and making edited speed paints for my main channel. So like there'd be no commentary. Or maybe I could do ones with like scripted commentary, depending on how long the speed paint is. I don't know. I haven't really had the opportunity to edit things before, and I think maybe doing that would help with learning how to edit more. Because, like, learning how to edit videos is a very, very important skill to have if you're going to be making content. But, like, I've got so many other things going on that I think it would be just- it would be better worthwhile to, like, wait and then, like, whenever I can afford it, hire somebody to do that for me. I think it would be much better that way. I remember whenever I first, um, started, excuse me, making content and like trying to figure out how to edit videos, excuse me, I was still in high school whenever I first started trying to edit things, and like, <laughs> it is not easy, <laughs> it, it will never be easy. Cause like, I edited a video for one of my projects that I submitted. That's part of the reason why I got so upset that it wasn't accepted, because I put a lot of work into that video to, to, to showcase the piece. I should have just submitted the video on its own. But honestly, it probably wouldn't have gotten accepted anyway, as, like, themes are a thing. And some things don't fit themes. Oh, I haven't even done the shading yet. Hold on.
but yeah i've thought about i remember back when i first started streaming i wanted to edit some of my stream playthroughs and upload those on my main account but that just never happened because i just don't have the time to do that but like um i also don't have the resources to hire somebody to help me with that but maybe like i said maybe in the future i can do that but like that would be like in the distant future when i have money <laughs> and by that point i'll probably just uh send out like applications or something because like i feel like that would be that would be good i won't ever take any free offers i refuse to do that you deserve to be paid for your labor. But if someone was like, I'll edit your videos for free, then I'll be like, hell no! Don't ever, don't ever offer that to anybody. You're leaving yourself open for exploitation. Don't do that. Besides, if something's free, then like, you have no obligation to do it anyway. So there's risks on both sides with doing that. Not only should you hold yourself to a higher worth, you should also consider it as a good incentive to actually do the work. You saying? Honestly, I'm not worried about putting lights on this one. Oof. Right. Like, that's still bright, but like... Not overwhelmingly bright, you know? Here we go. That's nice. Now it's time to erase my least favorite part. We're almost done though. Honestly, I should probably change the background. No. Make it like darker. So like with these lighter colors, I can spot if like I've accidentally gone over or something. I'm just gonna hop around. If I like focus on one spot, I'm gonna get frustrated. I think mostly right now I want to take out the large chunks. I totally forgot about the hips. Oh, 
Also, a good thing about making the background dark like this is that I can see little spots that I miss inside, both inside and out. Also, I'm glad that War is playing because that song's really good and it really helps me focus. I like high energy music and that's probably one of the highest energy songs in the soundtrack. Alongside Pizza Time and um, The Death I Deserve Ioli, those songs are also really good. It's over. It's over. No more song. <laughs> this one's good too. Really, pretty much all of the songs of the Tower soundtrack are good. Good music makes everything easier.
Look at that. Nice. All cleaned up and everything. I have an idea. I always have ideas though. colors. Let's see. Um, do I want to make it mosaic or no? No, I don't think so, but I want to do something. Thing. That's such a weird filter. It's polar coordinates. I've never really known how to use it properly, except for maybe once. That's a filter. What's this? Oh, it's like a bunch of settings. how to utilize that honestly. I think I'll blur it a little bit so it well that didn't really help very much but uh gosh and blur. There's different types of blurs. Ooh.
There we go. And anti-aliasing turned off. So they kind of sort of need that to be on. Oops. Like, it always looks weird whenever you have these weird empty spaces for no good reason. <laughs> Specific setting I forgot about. Oops. Okay. Oh, it was like that. Shit. Well then. Alright. Do that instead. How will it look? make this look a little bit better. I haven't done my 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 super silly colorful effect backgrounds in a while, so that's why I've been doing that a lot. Cause I like it, it's fun. I think it's very enjoyable. Brightness. Cute and pink. And I like pink. 
Anyway, um, I actually change that color to something a little bit better. Oh, I always use multiply. put it somewhere where like it'd be difficult to remove and I think this works pretty well. All right. Let me save this real quick. <laughs> I'd make tons of noise during the process. I liked I liked drawing that. I had a lot of fun today. I know that like I was super quiet towards the end. That tends to always happen during drawing streams. I always go quiet. But like honestly, drawing streams are more about the art and just hanging out more so than like trying to be like well content, you know. I like it. I like this piece a lot. I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Well, anyway, thank you so much for visiting. Ooh. Now, I hope you have a great day, and as always, farewell. <laughs>